The Shandwu Gate incident was a palace coup for the throne of the Tang Dynasty on 2 July 626, when Prince Li Shimin and his followers assassinated Crown Prince Li Jiancheng and Prince Li Yuanji. Li Shimin, the second son of Emperor Gaozhi, was in an intense rivalry with his elder brother Li Jiancheng and younger brother Li Yuanji. He took control and set up an ambush at Shandwu Gate, the northern gate leading to the palace city of the imperial capital Chang'e. There, Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji were assassinated by Li Shimin and his men. Within three days after the coup, Li Shimin was installed as the crown prince. Emperor Gaozhi abdicated another 60 days later and passed the throne to Li Shimin, who would become known as Emperor Taizong. Background after the founding of the Tang Dynasty, Li Jiancheng was created the heir apparent. Even though Li Jiancheng was designated as the heir apparent, he was often overshadowed by his younger brother Li Shimin. Li Shimin was instrumental in defeating several of Tang's major rivals. He had led the attack on Dao Jada and Wang Shichong, whom he defeated in battle, which gained him prestige amongst his contemporaries. Meanwhile, Li Jiancheng was stationed along the northern frontier to guard it against the Tuju, which left him unable to build up a similar reputation. Eventually, Emperor Gaozhi elevated Li Shimin's position above all the other nobility. He also placed Li Shimin in charge of the civil and military administration of the Eastern Plain with Luo Yang as its headquarters. There, Li Shimin established himself and appointed about 50 civil and military officials, which made it possible for him to challenge the heir apparent's preeminence. In 621, he established the College of Literary Studies with a staff of 18 scholars to serve as his advisors on state affairs. This may have brought forth the suggestion that Li Shimin could harbor the ambition to ascend to the throne of the Tang Empire. Henceforth, Li Jiancheng attempted to undermine Li Shimin by getting his staff members removed and reassigned to other posts. Prince Li Shimin found himself unable to gain support in the capital Chang'e or inside the imperial palaces as he was often away on military expeditions. For his support, he relied on Lu Yang, where he could successfully build strong support among military and civil officials. Meanwhile, in Chang'e, Crown Prince Li Jiancheng was increasing his power by recruiting more than 2,000 men to serve in the Changlin troops, which he stationed at the East Palace near the Changlin Gate. He was also allied with his second younger brother Prince Li Yuanji. They had the support of Emperor Gaozhu's consorts, who often interceded with court affairs on behalf of the two princes. There were allegations that Yang Wenigan was raising troops. So Li Jiancheng, who was left in charge of the capital while Emperor Gaozhu was away in his summer palace, could commit a coup for the Tang Dynasty throne. Although, there is still a matter of dispute on whether Li Jiancheng was actually involved amongst historians. Yang Wenigan was the regional commander of Kangzhou in Gansu and a former guard of Li Jiancheng at the East Palace. However, the aforementioned plot was disclosed to the authorities. Li Jiancheng was summoned from Chang'e and Yang Wenigan was summoned from his garrison post. Li Jiancheng went to seek forgiveness against the advice of a subordinate to seize the throne. However, Yang Wenigan rebelled in the sixth month of 624. Emperor Gaozhi sent Li Shimin to put down the rebellion, but Yang's own subordinates killed him after the imperial forces arrived at the scene. Emperor Gaozhi initially offered Li Shimin the position of heir apparent in light of Yang's rebellion. However, Li Jiancheng's supporters, Li Yuanji, the palace ladies, and Minister Feng Dea interceded to clear Li Jiancheng from the affair. Thus, Emperor Gaozhi allowed Li Jiancheng to remain the heir apparent, but exiled some of Li Jiancheng's advisors and at least one of Li Shimin's staff member. Prior to the coup, Prince Li Shimin survived a poisoning attempt by his two brothers. According to the Du Tang Shu, it happened prior to 626, while the Zizhitong Jan dates it to the 6th lunar month of 626, placing it within three days of the coup. 
Bingham states that the latter interpretation is most probably the one to be incorrect, since the poisoning had rendered Lee Shimon seriously ill, although, it's still disputed when or whether it had happened. Crown Prince Li Jiancheng and Prince Li Yuanji successfully plotted the dismissal of Fang Shanling and Du Ruhi from service. Yu Qi Jingda escaped an assassination attempt which was ordered by the two princes. Later, he was slandered by the two princes at court and came near execution if it was not for Li Shimin's intercession. By 626, Li Shimin became increasingly worried by his brother's successful machinations in turning Emperor Gauge against him and in removing his staff, members, events leading to the incident. Early 626, the Tuju attacked the frontier of the Tang Empire. Usually, Li Shimin would be sent against Tuju forces. However, at Li Jiancheng's recommendation, Li Yuanji was commissioned for the military campaign. Thus Li Shimin's best generals and crack troops were transferred to Li Yuanji. Thereafter, Li Shimin received word from his men that Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji had taken preparations to assassinate him when he would see off Li Yuanji as was the custom during the onset of a military campaign, Li Shimin decided to take action and planned to dispose of his two brothers at the advice of his subordinates, especially Zhang Sun Wu Ji, Fang Shanling, Du Ru Hui, Yu Qi Jingde, and Hu Junji. Li Shimin sent Zhang Sun to recall his two most important advisors Fang Shanling and Du Ru Hui to help plan the course of action. Li Shimin also bribed Chang He, who at the time was the military commander of Shandwu Gate, into following his orders. Few years prior, Chang had been an officer under Li Shimin, but he was eventually reassigned to a key position at the Shandwu Gate in 624. Eventually, Li Shimin submitted a message to Emperor Gaoge, accusing Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji of having illicit affairs with several consorts of the emperor. After receiving the message, Emperor Gaoge summoned Li Shimin to come for an audience the following morning. The emperor also requested for his personal advisors Pei Ji, Cou, Chen Shuda, Feng Lun, and Yan Shigu to come. However, consort Zhang learned of Li Shimin's accusations and informed Li Jiancheng. Li Jiancheng summoned Li Yuanji to deliberate together on how to deal with the difficult situation. The two princes opted to not attend the imperial court that morning, but excuse themselves due to illness and prepare the troops, so they could observe the situation. However, Li Jiancheng said that the troops were already prepared and wanted to leave for the palace city to hear firsthand what was amiss. While Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji left at dawn to consult Emperor Gaoge personally, Li Shimin and his followers had taken control over Shandwu Gate, Ku Diyakut Tat. On the dawn of 2 July 626, Prince Li Shimin and his followers arrived at the Shandwu Gate, where they awaited the arrival of Crown Prince Li Jiancheng and Prince Li Yuanji. Chang He, a military officer stationed at Shandwu Gate, also led his troops in support of Li Shimin on the day of the coup. As Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji approached the Lin Yu Hall, they began to realize that a coup was about to unfold and immediately retreated eastward. Li Shimin rode towards his brothers and hailed them. Hereupon, Li Yuanji attempted to draw his bow to fire his arrows at Li Shimin, but he did not manage to draw it. Li Shimin started to fire his arrows at Li Jiancheng and killed him. Yu Qi Jingde and 70 horsemen caught up with Li Yuanji and shot at him, causing Li Yuanji to fall from his horse. However, Li Shimin's horse fled into the woods and became entangled with tree branches, which led to Li Shimin falling off his horse too and being unable to get up. Li Yuanji quickly grabbed Li Shimin's bow and tried to strangle his brother with it. However, Yu Qi Jingde arrived and shouted at him, thus Li Yuanji fled on foot toward a hall. Nevertheless, he overtook Li Yuanji and killed him with his arrows. 
Following the deaths of Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji, while Li Ximen's forces held Shandwu Gate under their control, fighting broke out between the two armed factions. When Yu Qi Jingde arrived with the heads of the two princes, their retainers quickly dispersed with their troops. Aftermath Emperor Gauge was sailing on a lake inside the palace city during the time of the coup. Bingham speculates that the emperor was alarmed by the impending crisis, thus he withdrew himself from the situation. He also surrounded himself with senior officials who were friendly to Li Shimon, because he possibly realized that Li Shimon was the cause of this and had better military connections that provided him with the advantage. The officials were Pei Ji, Cao Yu, Chen Shuda, Feng Lun, Zhan Shigu, Dao Dan, and Yuan Shijia. All, but Chen Shuda and Dao Dan, are said to have taken up important positions in the future government of Prince Li Shimon when he became emperor. During the ongoing battle, Li Shimon sent Yu Qi Jingde, who was still fully armed, into the palace city to announce the news of the situation to Emperor Gaoge. Emperor Gaoge asked what was disturbing the peace and why he has come. Yu Qi Jingde replied, The Crown Prince and the Prince of Cheek committed treason. The Prince of Qin mobilized his troops and executed them. He feared that your Imperial Majesty would be shocked and he sent me to protect you. Emperor Gaoge accepted the answer that he received from Yu Qi Jingde. Subsequently, as the Zizhitong Jan states, Emperor Gaoge turned to his officials and asked of them, I did not anticipate that today I should see such a thing as this. What ought to be done about it? Two of them spoke highly meritoriously of Li Shimin and said that the two princely brothers were punished by Li Shimin. They also recommended Emperor Gaoge to appoint Li Shimin as the heir apparent. At Yu Qi's advice, Emperor Gaoge issued an imperial edict ordering the remaining forces to stop their resistance and to submit to Li Shimin. In the end, Li Shimin had taken full control over the Tang government, provided Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji were defined as conspirators. Their sons were all executed and posthumously excluded from the imperial clan as well. Within three days, Emperor Gaoge created Li Shimin the heir apparent. On the ninth day of the eighth month, he abdicated in favor for Li Shimin. He became a Taishang Huang himself, only appearing in public sometimes to attend ceremonial functions at court. In 632, Ma Zhou charged that the retired Emperor Gaoge had settled in Duran Palace, which he considered an inhospitable place as it was built on low-lying lands at Chang'e that was plagued by dampness and heat during the summer. According to him, ever since Emperor Taizong moved to the countryside during the summers, his retired father was left behind in Chang'e to suffer in the summer heat. However, his father would always decline any invitation to spend the summer together when Emperor Taizong eventually did invite him. Ma Zhou also charged that Emperor Taizong had not visited his father for a long time even though they lived nearby each other. Ever since the Bloody Palace coup, it seemed that father and son had drifted apart to such an extent that their relationship never healed. In 634, Emperor Taizong launched the construction of the Daiming Palace. He ordered the construction of the new Summer Palace as a residence for his father. However, Emperor Gaoge grew ill and never bore witness to the palace's completion before his death in the fifth month of 635. Bibliography Bingham, Woodbridge, Li Ximin's Coup in A.D. 626 I. The Climax of Princely Rivalry. Journal of the American Oriental Society 70. Bingham, Woodbridge, Li Ximin's Coup in A. D. 626. 2. Action at the HSUAN Wu Gate. Journal of the American Oriental Society 70. Chen, Jack W. The Poetics of Sovereignty. On Emperor Taizong of the Tang Dynasty. Cambridge. Harvard University Asia Center, ISBN 9780674056084, Chung, Sia Yang P., A Study of the Daming Palace, Documentary Sources and Recent Excavations, Artibus Asia E50.
23-72, DOI, 10.2307, 3,250,086, JSTOR 3,250,086, Wenchler, Howard J., The Founding of the Tianj Dynasty, Cao Su, The Cambridge History of China, Volume 3, Su and Tianj China, 589-906, Part 1, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0-521-21446-7.